Hi everyone, welcome to GemChem. Now today's video is on liquid state part 7 video and here we will deal with measurement of viscosity of the liquid state. Now before starting, if you have not watched the previous parts on liquid state where we have dealt with viscosity of the liquid state, you can watch it. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. So now let us start. Now basically we will deal with three methods of measurement of viscosity. First will be a relative method. Second will be using falling sphere viscometer and the last will be rotating cylinder method. Now the most important is the first one and the last two will be also discussed. Now in this Oswald viscometer method we basically do a relative job that is we take the viscosity of the liquid with respect to the water. Now water viscosity can be measured or determined very accurately at various temperatures so it is taken as standard and then the viscosity is being major, measured, right? Now, uh, what we first do, this is the apparatus of the Oswald viscometer that is present here. First, the liquid is poured in this wider bore, that is wider tube with a bulb, right? Then the liquid is being sucked from this tube, that is the narrow tube. And it is sucked until it comes here. Okay, now what we see, this is the wider bore from which the liquid enters and this is the narrower bore from which we suck it. These are the two principles. Now what we do? We then leave the liquid. That is we stop sucking. Now as the liquid comes in A1, the stopwatch is being made on and the liquid is allowed to flow. And when it comes here, that is at the end of the capillary, the measurement of the time is being taken. So, the time taken to cover this x distance is considered to be as theta 1. Right. This is considered to be as theta 1. And so, from the formula of viscosity, we can write it as for the liquid, eta equals pi h rho 1 g r to the power 4 theta 1 this is the time taken by 8 l v and we know what is v what is l previously discussed now for water we calculate same thing we take in water from here that is from here and then we suck the water and when the water comes here we start our stopwatch and then when the liquid comes here we stop our stopwatch and the time taken is theta 2 right now we will write for the water theta 2 is the time and eta this is for the liquid and this is for the water pi h rho of water right g r to the power 4 theta 2 by 8 l v now we compare it now when we compare it, we get eta equals to eta w rho 1 theta 1 by rho w theta 2, right? So the density of the liquid and water are separately determined. Now density of water and the density of the liquid can be determined using an apparatus known as pyknometer, okay? And we should take different precautions to maintain the temperature. And the temperature is well maintained using a device called thermostat. And then the tube must be thoroughly cleaned before usage. Otherwise impurity can change the viscosity. Now so using this formula we can easily determine the viscosity of the liquid. Now second method is falling sphere viscometer. Now in this case there first we will derive the Stokes law. Okay because when a body moves through a viscous medium its motion is opposed by a frictional resistance. We know that. In order to maintain a uniform velocity a driving force is applied to overcome the viscous drag and it was shown by Stokes that when a spherical body of radius r moves with a constant terminal velocity u through a medium having coefficient of viscosity eta, then the driving force F, which 
just balances the frictional resistance is given by this formula that is F equals to 6 pi eta R B. If this spherical body falls under the gravity then we know its force equals to 4 by 3 pi r cube that is the volume into the difference in density of the solid sphere and the liquid that is d this is of the solid sphere and this is of the liquid and g g is the acceleration due to gravity when these two forces are being equated we can write it as 6 pi eta r v equals to 4 by 3 pi r cube d minus dl g and here this v comes to be as 2 by 9 r square d minus dl g by eta right now this is the stokes law evidently we can see that we can measure velocity of the spherical ball moving through a vertical column of liquid and it would be easy to know the viscosity of the medium right on knowing the velocity we can determine the viscosity so we consider this apparatus okay from here a spherical ball is being thrown down okay now the tube is being filled by a liquid which is under the investigation small tube uh, like small steel balls with radius of uh, 1 millimeter or 1.5 millimeter are being taken and they are dropped through the narrow opening B which is present here okay now what happens the time theta is being taken by the ball to travel from this part to this part that is starting from here to here that is this is a1 to a2 right now the velocity is given by the length divided by time right that is it can be given as this if a2, a1 a2 equals to the length divided by the theta is being given by the velocity right so the coefficient of viscosity is then calculated from this equation that is present here that we have seen here. We know the viscosity, we know the density so we can get the theta, we can get the eta value right. Now see that the tube A is kept in a large cylinder of water we can see so that the temperature can be maintained. A constant temperature is being maintained by using a stirrer and a thermometer is being placed to see the temperature whether it is constant or not okay this was the experiment for determination of viscosity using falling sphere viscometer now this is the last apparatus which is rotating cylinder method or hats check viscometer right now in this method the liquid is taken in between the two concentric cylinders that is this one and this one these are two cylinders and liquid is taken in between them okay when one of the cylinder is being rotated say the outer cylinder b with a constant angular velocity there is a shearing of liquid that is movement of liquid and it drags the inner cylinder with it until the twist of suspension wire neutralizes the same that is when the b moves the liquid tries to move the a in somewhat different direction so that the effect is being neutralized now the deflection which is observed is noted by a mirror m and a scale okay we can see the mirror okay and it has a scale and is proportional to the viscosity and u that is the velocity so we can write it as the deflection equals deflection comes to be as k eta u now if we take the relative viscosity we can do it as eta 1 by eta 2 equals to delta 1 by delta 2 this method gives satisfactory results for the liquids with high viscosity okay now this measurement why is it important so much viscosity measurement because it has application in study of biology physiology and also in dealing with various problems of technology specifically we know paints must be viscous 
petroleum, ink, colloids, rubber, textile, etc. And this data are immense importance for the chemical engineering equipment. When the gases or liquids are to be pumped, so they must be less viscous or more viscous depending upon the criteria of usage. So recently it has been used to determine the molecular weights of polymers. Okay, so this was the measurement of the viscosity of liquid. So hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe and comment.